and welcome back. We're here with the long-awaited postman, postman guide. Now, this is going to be a different guide compared to Tosio, the one I did with Tosio. As in, instead of just just playing and then talk, answering questions that people had, I'm going to go full in depth, talk about every, basically every aspect I can about Postman and how you can learn to at least get better with him or at least know the fundamentals and how to use him. So I really hope this helps y'all and just hope, at least brings awareness to like to Postman and Postman that he's not as bad as people really make him out to be. But I hope y'all enjoy it and let's get on with the video. First up, we have the basics of Postman. So, at the core, ba Postman is a support character. He is an assist type character to help survive survivors in any way he can and can just by through his letters and his dog as well to help them them in kiting later on. So, but that's there's a little bit more to Postman. Postman is a support character. He can harass. He can also good at kiting and he can also decode. So with support specifically. He has his letter letters to give his teammates or himself buffs to help him all, all, out in the kiting, and as well as he has a dog to help that uh, help the kiter kite longer and slow down the hunter to give the give people time to continue decoding or get the last cipher machine primed. Now harassment harassment can you use the do dog to harass harass the hunter, make it so that he can't find someone quick enough or just waste time and time again to get that last cipher prime just if the hunter's too far from a down survivor and they're dead on chair send the dog to them them and it slows them down and down to buy some time kiting kiting again his letters can help him kite and kite he can send the letter out give himself and get and he gets the buff with it and then his dog can help help him last the kite and make the kite even longer to make sure ensure it's a three cipher kite or a four cipher kite, or maybe even a five. And then decoding. He and he is good at decoding. Now a lot of people don't realize this is that he actually has a decoding debuff, which is five percent decoding debuff. However, he does have a have letters to help him out in that department, or at least just make it so that his decoding is about and can match up to the other survivors, and he can finish a cipher by the time the first survivor goes down and gets shared. But that's basically just that's the pure basics of Postman, and we'll be getting on into into Persona builds and as well as more stuff later on. So let's talk about Persona builds. So Persona builds, a lot of people on top, um, top 100 leaderboards for Postman are running downright or downright knee jerk and it's not good on him you're relying on way too much luck that you don't get found first first that it's a hunter that you're able to kite that you start off with kiting letters that you're able to go ahead and give yourself those letters or give them to into someone else to get and avoid all of it it's just it's too much rng base to focus on running a downright build so the best build for postman is to run a left right build and just run a kite in general kiting build so the builds i normally i would suggest for postman at least like a basis off ba and basis build off would be first off left right max snooze so three and snooze and then two and sticker that's the first basic one i'd say this is a good one on pretty much every character it's good on postman and postman it's always good to make sure you can stay on chair longer so you can wasting more time time for the hunter um another build um, build would be Max will to survive and Mac and two and sticker instead. Again, wiggle free, you're free and free. You waste more time and time for the hunter. You get to kite again. Again, you can meet me dog him after after breaking free and just kite longer, uh, longer and just buy your time and buy time and get away. Um, next build would be MB Max Great Power. Get a pallet stun and stun. He's stunned for longer. You're wasting more time. You make distance, distance and as well as plus two sticker and sticker. Now, here's where we get away from Sticker in this, is where we run Max News and 2 and will to survive. So if you don't want to be running, if you want to be able to try and wiggle free or you're having a lot of that happen to where you could have wiggled free if you were running will to survive, you can run Max News and run 2 and will to survive. I use this build quite often, quite a lot, a lot especially on Sacred Heart. Heart, it's very useful, it's very good. Good, a lot of times I don't get, my Sticker is not as useful to me. Me, but it's also again it's based on, on based on your own preferences on how you want to play the game and game this is the builds i suggest using for postman um next build would be max news and using two in great power instead 
kite. Mm, you can kite, but mm, if you know you're gonna be able to kite long enough, you can get pilot stuns, and you're able to get e pilot stuns a lot. That run great power and, and make the kite even longer. And then last build I would suggest is just running max will to survive and max great power. If you're good at mm, kiting long, long, you struggle. You struggle. Mm, can struggle. Mm, you get the chance to struggle free a lot, a lot. You get pallet stuns a lot, a lot. You're not on the chair as often. This would be a good build for you, um, build for you to run as well. Um, well, but again, it's like these are basic builds. You can edit them any way you want, but these are the ones I would no really suggest trying to use at least on a basis of. Is use these builds, builds. You have a basis to go off of, and then you can edit them how you feel and see fit. But the whole overall persona build for Postman, run left, right. Do not run down right. Don't run tied. Tied. It's not good on him. Him. He needs to be able to kite. He doesn't have enough utilities, enough, enough stability to be able to run down right and have a good and be able to kite and kite decently. But, uh, and then it's just more of the sense that it, it's just he's not a rescuer. Don't make. He's not a rescuer at all. Don't think he's a rescuer. Rescuer. He is a kiter. He is a support. He's not supposed to rescue. But let's get on to the next part and part of the video. All right, let's do a quick overview of the letters. So, Postman gets six le uh, six letters in total, in total, all of them, and he starts with and gets three at the start of the game, and they'll randomly, and all three will randomly switch out every time you use your letter. So it's very luck based on what you're getting, what you start with, all that. That. So the six letters we have are going to be the inspiring le letter, which is increases your vaulting speed, but and speed. Then we've got the farewell letter, which gives you a speed boost after a speed boost when you vault a pallet or a window. Then there is the tranquility letter, which increases your decoding speed. The hope letter, which show, increases gate opening speed and shows you dungeon location. And urgent letter, which increases your movement speed. And then the bravery letter, which increases movement speed running towards the chair and as well as increasing your rescue speed. So that's just a quick overview. We'll be going into more detail later on in the video. In the video. Up next, we're going to talk about Postman's dog, Wick. Now, there's two parts to this. There's both the delivery and as well as sending him to bite and bite the hunter. We're going to talk about the delivery first and then go on to the bite. So, with Wick and Wick's delivery, there's the delivery time, how, when it fa when it can fail, and how long the cooldown is based on, um, cooldown is of the letter, the letter itself based on what happens. So, delivery time takes a minimum of 4 seconds and a, and maximum of 15. If it takes longer than 15, the delivery will fail and the and the dog will not send a letter. How this can fail is if the hunters if the survivors are mobilized, say they're chaired or they're down and downed, they can't receive the le letter so the dog will cancel cancel it. And as well as the delivery can fail if it takes too long based on like say you're going against a photo specifically. If a, su a survivor is in the photo world, the wick will go towards the survivor because he cannot enter the photo world. So the f delivery will fail then as well. And through all, all of this, even with it failing, cooldown will not be increased. The only time cooldown will be increased, increased by 50% is if you s give it to y give the letter to yourself without sending it to anyone else. Oh, so you'll have a normal 60 second cool and cooldown and go with sending the letter and it being received or not being received. Compared to giving it to yourself, you'll get it and get a hundred and not 120, 90 second cooldown and down, which is 50% more, more, which is a minute and a half. Now let's talk about the bite. So the bite itself, you want to use when the hunter has like no way to actually avoid it. So you want to use it like immediately around corner, like use it when the hunter's just about to turn a corner. They're in a tight hallway, hallway, or they're not gonna expect it in the open or something. Uh, and don't be charging it. If you're gonna charge it, they're gonna expect it. They're gonna be ready to avoid it. If you, you want to just tap it, look behind you and tap it. Then most hunters won't ever suspect it because there's no animation until you actually tap that button. If you're holding it, you're stuck in an animation while running backwards looking at them. So they're going to be expecting it then. Now, when you do actually hit it, 
it lasts six seconds and it slows the hunter down by 35 percent it is a very significant speed movement speed debuff and it is very helpful with kiting and kiting and as well as for other or other survivors just to get away now that here's the thing too is that it only lasts six seconds of course but it is a good very good one it's not as good as acrobats mud balls as like direct erect or even on even when I'm walking through the mud ball, but it's very good of a slowdown. Now, the cooldown itself can be two different things. If you hit it, it's 45 second cooldown. But if you do miss the dog, you get a 10 second cooldown cool before you can send and send the pounce and send Wick to bite the hunter again. Again, which may not seem a lot, a lot, but in a t in a game where you need to kite maybe 60, 90 seconds in order to actually count for three ciphers maybe and possibly lo more a little bit longer for four four ten seconds is quite a lot a lot but however the 45 second cooldown doesn't seem as bad either you can get two or three dogs in a in, in a really good kite okay but overall that's the full gist of the dog i can and and that's as well as you need to be able to use it properly and for both kiting and as well as just sending letters just so you have an idea on what to expect when you're using him for letters and as well as using him to bite and bite the hunter first up we have the inspiring letter this increases your pilot throwing speed vaulting speed and, and as well as window vaulting speed all by 10 percent this should be your first letter to give out at the beginning of the game, always to the slowest vaulter like Mechanic, Mind's Eye, and as well as Priestess, and so on and so forth. And if there is no slowest vaulter in those regards of them actually having a vaulting debuff, give it to maybe Seer who can potentially have a vaulting debuff, or a Cowboy who could use it use it in his kiting or as well, well as his vaulting when carrying someone. And so on. And if none and none of the and those people really need it, give it to a coordinator. Coordinator could always use it and use it in her kiting because she doesn't have the best kite. Or you can give it to a four and forward if he's being chased as well to make him even more of a hassle to deal with in kite. Next up is the Farewell-er. The Farewell-letter gets you a 40% speed boost for 3 seconds after vaulting a window or pallet and pallet, but it has a lesser priority of a broken windows and a knee-jerk, so meaning that it will not activate unless broken windows or knee-jerk has been used when you vault that window or pallet respectively. Overall, this letter lasts for 90 seconds in total, in total and it can only be used one time. Now, when to use this letter is to use it, and use it on at the beginning of the game, give it to a rescuer, a rescuer like coordinator or forward or first officer officer that needs help early game and kite in kiting in kiting that can be more or they can be more of a threat early game in game or as well as you can give it to the current kiter that's not injured or if they're far enough away while inj injured as well they give them more of a speed boosting make distance next is the tranquility letter the tranquility letter increases your decoding speed by 20 percent for 30 seconds you want to go ahead and then use this yes, as your second letter most of the time and time after sending out your inspiring letter a letter at the beginning of the game to the rescuer and the rescuer or the slowest decoder encoder order to help them get their cipher farther and farther in, pro in progress and by the time they need to go and rescue or finish their cipher faster and as well as you finish your cipher faster with your five percent debuff as well. Our fourth letter is going to be the urgent letter. The urgent letter gives you a 10% increase in movement speed for 15 seconds. When you want to go ahead and use this, especially when you give this to yourself in a kite and immediately dog the hunter, you make so much distance and you get so far away and away and just make that kite even longer. You can also use use it to the current kiter, kiter to help them get farther away. Next up is the Bravery Letter. The Bravery Letter increases rescue speed by 30% and also increases the movement speed by 10% when near a chair. chair. And this letter lasts 180 seconds in total. This letter is very useful for sending early into a into a rescue group, but it's not you're not going to prioritize it as much uh, much than th compared to the other letters. You don't get much use out of this letter in most of your games. Our last letter is the Hope Letter. The Hope Letter increases your gate opening speed by 30% with no set time limit on the letter last letter's effects. It will also go ahead and show you dungeon location and the dun dungeon location if it is spawned. And it spawns at two when you finish two ciphers. Now you want to go ahead and use this towards 
towards the end of the game when there's like one or two ciphers left, but it's not the biggest priority. Sometimes you also need to keep sending letters out to help you know, help the kiter last longer to get that cipher cipher primes or stuff like that. But it's and this is all, always going to be a letter that you s send out towards the end of the game. In game, a lot of the times I haven't happen to wear the ciphers primes, but I don't have a cool my cool. I'm still on cooldown, so I will tell them try and last a little bit long, longer so I can send a hope letter out out and do that. Now let's talk about the tier list. So my tier list for the letters is Inspiring, Farewell, and Tranquility are S tier, A tier are going to be Hope and an Urgent, and B tier is going to be Bravery. I'm basing this off of how often do I use them, what's my priority overall for them, and how useful are they, and how much use do I get out of them. So Inspiring is my number one priority letter to send out at the beginning of the game, give it the slowest the slowest vaulter and stuff like that, and it's that. Farewell is good for kiting and kiting. Give it to a rescuer, that rescuer to kite even better, better, or give it to the current kiter and kiter and stuff like that. And then as well as with the tranquility letter, I will usually be be one of my second letters to send out as well. Give that to the slowest encoder, encoder the rescuer, so that they finish their cipher fast, the cipher by the time in time the first survivor gets and downed and shared. And Jared, that's why they're all S tier. They're my most used letters. They I get the most use out of them, and I'm also going ahead and having the most uh, priority out of them as well. Now, A tier are going to be Hope and Urgent. Urgent, I'm not going to use as much. I'll use it very rarely, but I'll but I'll use it for myself and self when kiting. Give it to myself and immediately dog dog the hunter to get as much distance as possible. And then with Hope, I don't, it's very useful, but I use it, I only use it late game. I don't use it early game. I don't, it's not a big enough priority compared to the others. Now, my lowest tier letter is going to be the Bravery letter. The reason why is that I don't get much use out of this. Most of the time when I send the Bravery letter out, the rescuer is already there and it's already rescued. So by the time they get their Bravery letter, it's already, it, it's already up there. The rescue is done. It's whatever. And it's not a big enough priority compared to the others. I only need that for rescues. The others, I need them for other points in the game. Alright, we're going to go ahead and talk about Kep Postman's counters now and who he counters. Now, we're going to go more in depth of who he fully counters and who fully counters him more than the soft counters because basically almost every hunter soft counters him and he soft counters them. them. But we're going to mainly talk about the full, full counters and counters. Now, the, the only real hunter that fully counters postman is going to be soul weaver the reason why is she has her web she can get tier three very quickly the dog can't slow soul weaver down enough for postman to make much of a difference to get away in a way so and so soul weaver, weaver gonna, is going to counter postman now with me on pc and eq eq i rarely ever see a soul weaver ever so I don't normally have this problem too much, but it's like when I do, I normally try and hide anyways, ways, anyways normally, and just waste the hunter's time, time just trying to find me. And my man, that's how I would normally do it and do it at least, especially against Soul Weaver, who who literally counters Postman. Now, let's talk about the second counter. The second counter is going to be Geisha, but this is going to be Postman countering Geisha. Postman can fully counter Geisha in the sense that. He slows down the dash as well with the dog. The dash is also slowed down, and she's already quite slow anyways. Anyways, the dog is just gonna make it much worse for her, and she can, and she can't catch up as easily against a postman, uh, a good postman. Like if it is because if he sets, gets his dogs right and he stops her dash most of the, every time, Geisha's never going to catch him. And especially if there's a seer on the team as well, and he's also got his letters to buff, Geisha will never be able to truly catch Postman, and Postman unless he catches him off guard or something. Now, let's go along to the next next hunter that Postman counters, and that is going to be Hellember. Hell, and the reason why he counters Hellember is because because of Hellember needing more early game, he's not as not very strong early game whatsoever. And as well as that, to beat Hellenberg, you need to transition. As long as he doesn't have dolls and he has the just the phantom, you just transition and he can't catch you because you just dog Hellenberg and all you have to worry about is the phantom now. Because Hellenberg can't catch you with the dog, the phantom's the only thing you have to worry about. And then as well as if he does have a doll, and doll, it he then he's having to use his dolls to catch you, catch up to you. He can't use them. 
use them for camping as well, and will or something like that. So that's uh, why Hellenberg is countered by Postman. And then let's go along to the last full counter, which is Wu Chang. More specifically, Wu Chang's Black Form. Now, the reason why I say this is because Wu Chang's Black Form isn't extremely fast. And fast, it's not as fast as White Wu Chang, and it also doesn't have a big of a, a hitbox range. It doesn't have even with charge attack. And the reason why Postman fully counters him as well is because of his letters. He can get the boost, he can make distance and stuff like that. He can he can keep distance from Black Black Form Wu Chang. But as well as if you dog uh, a Black Form Wu Chang at the um, before they can bell you, you will always win that one v one situation because. If you dog before he bells you and he, you get belled, he will never be able to catch you and be able to catch up to you by the time you you get up from the bell animation. And he's way too the, the dog slows him way too much before he can actually catch up to you, you and actually make use of his bells. So then you don't have to worry about that as much. And then he does counter White Wu Chang just a little bit, but he's more of a soft counter. He can slow down the slip siphon. He can't catch up as easily. And then if you can do it early enough, you can slow down the fat, the charge attack as well and then that's completely used to, useless to them as well but overall he mainly fully counters black form with shank but i hope you all enjoyed enjoyed the counters at least and but soft counters wise basically every, he counters every soft counters every hunter and they all soft counter him him it's just a give and take with that Now we're going to be going over the team compositions that Postman best works with. Now, I would normally suggest just at least one rescuer, Postman's fine, but Postman overall works in basically every sort of team comp you can think of. His best one that's, the best one that he's very good with is going to be a double rescue, rescue with a kiter, or a double rescue with a, deco with a decoder, encoder, so that would be Merc and Forward as the double rescue, and Mechanic as the decoder, or a priestess or a steer as the quote unquote kiter and kiter with him like i and that's what i prefer to go with i prefer to go postman when it's a double rescue team rather than a solo rescue i'll go solo rescue once in a while if i know the team and i trust them a lot and i know we're gonna be, be fine on our own with a seer a merc and merc or forward and then also another, another off rescue or a kiter and sort of deal but that's gonna be overall now, but he overall works in just about every team comp you can think of. He's fine and he's good and everything, anything because he because of his letters can give so many different buffs and help so many people. People and those are the ones that. But I would normally suggest is at least one rescuer or double rescue get rescue for the best team compositions for him. All right, so now is for. Postman's overall tier for me specifically, I say he's a low A minus tier or a high B tier. I don't like he's not terrible, but he's also not the greatest either. Either and if you're if you know how he works and works and con and played him a lot a lot and you know how to do do a going against certain hunters, he can be extremely good. I've had a number of times where I've five cipher tied it with him, four cipher tied it, or just. Uh, Force I've had or been very a very helpful and brought a game back from a from a loss or a tie to a win. And when it's he's very very strong. A lot of people say he doesn't have a lot of an impact to the game, but he actually does. He has quite a big impact to the game game. Not as much as maybe forward and stuff, but he can put an impact in and help that or if forwards or or he can make forwards impact even greater and stuff like that. He does, he affects the game quite a lot. A lot, and that's I think that's some something people don't realize is how much he affects the game, and game, and how much he can affect affect the the, the turn of the tide of the table, turn of the tables, tables, and how much he can turn and turn the tables around for for his team. Now, assist type wise, he's on, honestly for assist type only specifically, he is the best pure assist type character. No one can beat him in pure assist. And it says he helps everyone. He has his buffs can help everyone. His buffs are useful all around, around, and they affect the game so much, so much. And it's just there isn't anything to compete with that. It, as a pure assist character, in character, he does he does his job and he does it extremely well. 
but overall, that's that's my tier for him specifically. Honestly, overall, and as an assist type. Now, lastly, it's gonna be a quick Q and A. I went ahead, went through Tosio's community tab, and grabbed any comments that I could that I knew that I wasn't gonna be answer able to answer fully into in the video. And I only have one here. The rest of the comments, the rest of the questions in the in those community tabs from Tosio's Tosio's posts were I could answer them in the video and fully. And now this one is gonna be dope. People in high tier tend to look down on a non-meta character. What would you do if they belowed your choice of character from Hitsune unofficial? Now, I kind of answered this a bit in that guy in Tosia's guy, but I'm gonna answer it a bit more here. Now, I've had people I've had people belittle my character of postman. I like I ha I've had someone before go ahead and say and say and say and say post and question mark in chat or something of the sorts, like they just questioned my postman. And their and their duo was like, let them play po let them play what they want. Want it's fine. Fine, and I ended up five cipher kiting that game too. Again, since I'm fairly certain it was possibly a ripper, ripper, and I ended up like didn't go down the entire time. I five cipher fighting kite that full game, and it's 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 just you gotta show you have to show them that and show them to not be afraid of your character. Show them that your character just because your character is not meta. Show them that it's that you are good with them. That you know what you're doing and doing, and it's. It, it's it's rewarding to show people up a little bit, show them that like show people up that really don't like my like the character that I'm choosing and choosing and and choosing and hate that it's met non meta and I ended up end up showing them up. I show show them that I this is my character, this is my main. Do not belittle who I choose. I can do this. But I hope y'all enjoy overall I hope y'all enjoyed this video this guide. It was very interesting to make. This is gonna. This is my most edited video I've ever done, and it was quite fun to make too. Now I am gonna say, go ahead, hit that like, like, and subscribe to the channel. I do try and post as much content as I can, and as well as, I am probably going to make some more guides in the future. In the future, most likely a bonbon bon guide coming up next. I'm not entirely sure though. So, but we'll see about that. But I hope you all enjoyed. Do like, share, subscribe, and subscribe, and comment down below any questions you all have about Postman. And Postman that I didn't answer in the, in the video specifically, because I know I wasn't. I was going full in depth, and I might not have covered everything. I might have might not covered a question. Uh, co cover something that you want and want answered. Answered is something that could have happened. Happens, and I did try my best to try and get everything I knew of Postman and as much as that what people would be asking for fully. But I hope you all enjoyed, and also I will be trying to submit this to the Identity Vibe All Stars two the two little contest voting contest stuff. I will be trying to and to submit this, but and I do hope you all vote. Go ahead, vote for it and vote for it, and I wish myself luck with that. And I and if you don't, it's fine as long as you're here supporting the video, supporting my my content. I appreciate appreciate you. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video.